Okay, now we're going to just show you how to monitor a Windows service. On the Windows machine, we are going to um, copy the services.exe to the Zabbix folder. So Zabbix can use it with, uh, within its monitoring agent. So once that's copied, We are now going to edit the Zabbix configuration file on the Windows machine and uh, add the services.exe into the configuration file for monitoring. What you'll see here is that uh, the default editor of Notepad does not work very well. So let's just have a look what it looks like with Notepad. You can see that uh, the way it formats the Zavix configuration file is a bit uh, disgusting. So, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, even with word wrap, you can see that it doesn't help at all. So, uh, I always recommend on Windows to install Notepad++ whenever you're working with any configuration file or um, text file. So. Uh, just go to do a quick search for Notepad++ on Google. We will download and install it. We won't uh, go through the whole process of downloading and installing. I'm sure uh, you guys can do this on your own. It's pretty simple. And uh, once it's installed, we will um, open up the configuration file with Notepad++. And uh, then scroll down to the bottom of the file, and uh, we'll paste in the line into the agent configuration file that allows for the Zabbix server to monitor uh, services on this Windows server. So that's the line that you paste in. It's fairly simple. Uh, and then we just save the file. And uh, now what we're going to do is uh, we need to figure out which service we want to monitor. Uh, before we do that, let's have a look at the IP address. Uh, then we're going to go through to Zabbix and then add some configuration items to the, the specific node on Zabbix. So as you can see, um, it is 17 items under this host. And uh, the simplest way to do this, we could either create an item manually and set it up from scratch by clicking Create Item, or uh, we can just simply copy an item that's been already configured on another host, in this case, SAFMED SQL Server. Uh, this is for the Goldmine service. So we'll just copy this item um, to the node that we want to um, add an item to and then we'll just customize it once we've copied it. So we're going to choose um, the group which is Western Shop and uh, the server is, let's just confirm, there we go. Select the right host, click copy and uh, if we swap back to the host there we and refresh the page you can see that we've now got uh, 18 items instead of 17 so let's click on the items and we'll see our item has been copied across there we go and we'll click on it and let's customize it It's a different service, so we're not going to call it Goldmine. Um, in the ticket request, there wasn't uh, any indication of the service name being monitored, uh, just a port. So what we'll do is just try to figure out 
via the port which was uh, requested, which was 1197, what the corresponding service is. So we'll go back to Windows now. Um, we will just pause um, and restart. And uh, let's go into the command prompt and uh, issue a command to figure out what service is listening on that port. There's the command. And uh, we'll change it to 1197. And it will return uh, a PID, which is there. 892 is the PID. And uh, now we'll go into Task Manager and figure out what service is listening with that PID. We'll open up Task Manager. Go to view, let's add the PID column so we can actually see the PIDs related to each process. There we go. Let's see, 892 is DB Link 3. All right, so let's go to services. Let's have a look for it there for DBLink. There we go. There it is. Double click on it so we can get the service name. And uh, there we go. There's the service name uh, DBLink3. We will copy and paste that into our Zabbix configuration item. Go back to Zabbix now, paste it in. Um, as far as I know, Windows is not case sensitive, so um, let's try changing everything to lowercase so it looks consistent. If it doesn't work, we'll just come back in and uh, change it again. We have to change it in those, both those places, so the name and in the key. Um, let's save that out. and um, it's enabled there. Now let's go actually take a look and see if the service is working. So we're going to go now and look at our live data and see if it's actually monitoring and getting some uh, data back from that agent. Let's look at latest data. Open it up in a new tab. Select the correct host and uh, let's expand that out. See, there's DBLink. You see, we've actually got an error no such service. So it's not finding the service. That's probably to do the fact that uh, we changed it to lowercase. So let's change it back to the correct case and see if that sorts the issue out. DBLink. And uh, the key will change as well. Save it out. Let's go back to our items. And look at the latest data. Let's refresh the screen and see if we are now getting a value back. And there you go. Okay, we don't have an error anymore. We've now got a value of running zero. Um, and what that actually means is zero means is the, the code reported from Windows for a service that is running without an issue. So as long as we're getting in a zero, we know that the service is running correctly. There's no problem. Any other number besides a zero would indicate an issue. Let's look on the dashboard. What we'll do now is um, we're going to add a trigger so if that item um, is anything but zero then it will fire an alert to let us know the service is down if we look at our graph on that item you'll see that it's that's when the service wasn't running and then there's our zero state at the bottom there which is a correct state that's what we want to see
and uh, now we're going to go add our trigger for this hose. Go back to uh, Western Shop. And uh, we're going to copy the description from our other host the trigger for, for the other host and we're going to create a new trigger for our western shop server and we'll just customize it accordingly and we're just going to simply copy and paste between the two go and now let's customize it let's change the name uh, let's first make sure that it indicates a high alert when it goes off that there's a problem that's just the color on the dashboard that it's going to show and uh, let's now customize the name and uh, let's call this DB link 3 and change the service name in the expression and we'll use the correct case for this db link 3 and uh, let's save it before we do that uh, we're going to need to copy the name just change the name so it reflects the correct server and now we can save that out Uh, at the moment you can see it's got a red X on it because it hasn't enough time to um, get a trigger state. Let's re refresh that screen and uh, we should get a indication that it is working with a green tick. We're going to go into items, back into triggers, it'll refresh the screen and there you go, you can see that it's working. Okay, so now uh, we've got a trigger that will fire if anything goes wrong. And uh, before we say that uh, this has been completed, let's actually test to make sure it's working. So what we'll do is um, we'll go through to Windows and uh, we'll manually stop the service and make sure that Zabbix uh, fires um, off a trigger to let us know the service is not working. I just want to show you quickly the values here being returned. So um, there you can see that it's getting a value of running, which is uh, zero. And uh, when we stop the service, uh, we'll get a different value. So let's stop that service. There we go. Let's go back to Zabbix. And let's refresh the dashboard. And there you go. You can really see that uh, it's picked up, that the service is down, or there's an error with it, and it has fired an alert. Let's go back to our graph. Refresh it. So refresh it again. There you go. You can see that it's deviated from zero, and we've got another value on the graph, which uh, indicates that there's a problem. Our trigger is set to fire if it gets anything back besides zero, so it doesn't matter what error it gets. As long as it's uh, anything but zero, it will fire as a problem. There you go. You can see it. Uh, the Windows stopped state is 6, and we go back, and that's what caused the alert to fire.
let's uh, start the service back up and uh, then Zavix will pick up uh, that the service is working again we're getting a zero state back and it will clear the alert and indicate that the graph has gone back to zero and um, might take a minute or two Let's refresh this page and see if that uh, alert disappears Yeah, on the graph you can already see it's gotten back to zero state if we look at the values we'll see that it is now running again and uh, if we go back to the graph uh, we can see that uh, everything looks normal once again and let's refresh the dashboard and there we go Zabbix is letting us know everything's A-OK. -okay. All right, that's it. Pretty simple, isn't it? Let's just uh, close all our windows here and log out of the server. And that's how you monitor a Windows service with Zabbix. Hope you enjoyed it.